Hi, and welcome back. In 2010, a friend of mine gave me a book for my birthday. The name of it was One Second After by William R. Forston. It was a post-apocalyptic thriller of the after effects in the United States after a terrifying terrorist attack using electromagnetic pulse weapons. I have to say that book scared the crap out of me because it's totally plausible. An EMT attack on our country is what emergency planners call a high impact, low probability event. Even so, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of insurance, such as an extra transceiver tucked away properly. Just purchase an extra handheld uh, transceiver and don't even unbox it. Wrap it up like a present to your future self using two or more layers of heavy duty aluminum foil and carefully place it in a large box so that the foil cannot be torn or perforated with holes. Even a pinhole could allow Compton waves to enter. They have a wavelength of approximately 2.43 picometers. To put that into perspective, that's about 50 times smaller than a coronavirus. Make sure that you have a 12 volt charger cable as well. An EMP does not affect batteries, just modern electronics. Keep in mind that we're more likely to be impacted by weather events and other natural disasters. If you would like me to talk more about emergency preparedness tips in the future, please comment below. Are you ready to learn today's lesson? Well, let's get started. This video is lesson five, part four of my amateur radio technician class license course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I am your instructor, Gary Stevens. I've been an amateur operator since 2001. In 2014, I upgraded to my amateur extra license, and I've been teaching amateur radio for well over 15 years now. My call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. The T5 section covers electrical principles. On your randomly generated exam, you will be asked four questions from this sub-element. There are four groups in this section with 52 questions total. This lesson covers T5D, Ohm's Law, Series, and Parallel Circuits. You don't need to remember this, but Ohm's Law states that the current flowing in a circuit is directly proportional to the applied voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. In the previous lesson, I asked you to memorize the learning aid that calculated power. In this lesson, you need to learn a similar aid that is used for calculating current voltage and resistance. Just like before, once you draw the aid as shown, all you need to do is place your finger on what you are trying to solve for. We should know that the formula used to calculate current in a circuit is I equals E over R, or current equals voltage divided by resistance. Using our aid, we place our finger over the I to calculate current. We see that current is equal to E, voltage, divided by R, resistance. Our question might be like this. What is the formula used to calculate current in a circuit? A, I equals E times R, B, I equals E divided by R, C, I equals E plus R, or D, I equals E minus R. The correct answer, as we know, is B, I equals E divided by R. We also need to know that E equals I times R is the formula for calculating voltage in a circuit. Using our aid, we place our finger over the E and find that E equals I times R. The exam question may be this. What formula is used to calculate voltage in a circuit? A, E equals I times R. B, E equals I divided by R. C, E equals I plus R or D, E equals I minus R. 
We know from our A that the answer is A, E equals I times R. We also need to understand that R equals E divided by I is the formula used to calculate resistance in a circuit. Using our aid, we place a finger over the R and realize that R equals E divided by I. On the exam, we might see this question. What formula is used to calculate resistance in a circuit? A, R equals E times I. B, R equals E divided by I. C, R equals E plus I. Or D, R equals E minus I. The correct answer, as we know, is B, R equals E divided by I. It is wise to know that 30 ohms is the resistance of a circuit in which a current of 3 amperes flows when connected to 90 volts. We know this by using our aid to find the formula R equals E over I or E divided by I. Given 90 volts and 3 amps or amperes in the question, we simply do the math. 90 volts divided by 3 amps equals 30 ohms. By the way, for the exam, you may take a simple calculator that is not programmable. No smartphone apps are allowed. Our test question might look like this. What is the resistance of a circuit in which a current of 3 amperes flows when connected to a 90 volts? A, 3 ohms. B, 30 ohms. C, 93 ohms. Or D, 270 ohms. We know from our calculation that the answer is B, 30 ohms. We should know that 8 ohms is the resistance of a circuit for which the applied voltage is 12 and the current flow is 1.5 amperes. We solve this problem using our aid. Once we find our formula, we simply divide 12 volts by 1.5 amps and we get 8 ohms. The related question is, what is the resistance of a circuit for which the applied voltage is 12 volts and the current flow is 1.5 amperes. A, 18 ohms. B, 0 0.125 ohms. C, 8 ohms. Or D, 13.5 ohms. We know from our calculation that the answer must be C, 8 ohms. For the exam, know that 3 ohms is the resistant of a circuit that draws 4 amperes from a 12-volt source. By now, you should be an expert at calculating resistance. Using our aid, we know to divide 12 volts by 4 amperes. The quotient is 3 ohms. On your exam, you might see this question. What is the resistance of a circuit that draws 4 ohms from a 12-volt source? A, 3 ohms, B, 16 ohms, C, 48 ohms, or D, 8 ohms. We know from our aid and our math skills that the answer is A, 3 ohms. We need to know that 1.5 amperes is a current in a circuit with an applied voltage of 120 volts and a resistance of 80 ohms. We find the formula for current using our aid. Then we divide 120 volts by 8 ohms. That gives us 1.5 amps. The question you might see is, what is the current in a circuit with the applied voltage of 120 volts and a resistance of 80 ohms? A, 9600 amperes. B, 200 amperes. C, 0 0.667 amperes. Or D, 1.5 amperes. Again, our math shows the correct answer is D, 1.5 amperes. Understand that 2 amperes is the current through a 100 ohm resistor connected across 200 volts. Just like in the previous question, we solve for current in the same way. In this case, we divide 200 volts by 100 ohms and get 2 amps. Our test question might be, 
What is the current through a 100 ohm resistor connected across 200 volts? A, 20,000 amperes. B, 0.5 amperes. C, 2 amperes. Or D, 100 amperes. The correct answer, of course, is C, 2 amperes. Understand that 10 amperes is the current through a 24 ohm resistor connected across 240 volts. To determine the current, we divide 240 volts by 24 ohms and get 10 amps. A possible exam question is, what is the current through a 24 ohm resistor connected across 240 volts? A, 24,000 amperes, B, 0 0.1 amperes, C, 10 amperes, or D, 216 amperes? We know, of course, that the answer is C, 10 amperes. We need to be able to determine that one volt is the voltage across a two ohm resistor if a current of 0 0.5 amperes flows through it. We are given a current of 0.5 amps and a resistance of two ohms. From our aid, we know to multiply the two in order to determine the voltage of one volt. The exam question might be, what is the voltage across a two ohm resistor if a current of 0 0.5 amperes flows through it? A, one volt, B, 0 0.25 volts, C, 2.5 volts, or D, 1.5 volts? The correct answer is A, one volt. Know that 10 volts is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if a current of one ampere flows through it. Given one amp and 10 ohms, we use our A to find the formula and learn that we simply multiply the two. One amp times 10 ohms equals 10 volts. That was easy, wasn't it? The question is, what is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if the current of one ampere flows through it? A, one volt, B, 10 volts, C, 11 volts, or D, nine volts. We know with confidence that the answer is B, 10 volts. Likewise, we need to know that 20 volts is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if a current of two amperes flows through it. Just like before, we know the formula by using our aid. Given two amps multiplied by 10 ohms, we get 20 volts as the answer. On the exam, the question might be, what is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if a current of two amperes flows through it? A, eight volts, B, 0 0.2 volts, C, 12 volts, or D, 20 volts? Of course, the answer is D, 20 volts. We need to know in a series type circuit, DC current is the same through all components. Here is a simple series circuit. You don't need to memorize the math for this question. In this example, there are three 4 ohm resistors in series. To calculate the total resistance in series, we simply add these resistors. We do the math and find the current passing through the circuit. Our possible test question is, in which of the following circuit is DC current the same through all components? A, series, B, parallel, C, resonant, or D, branch? The correct answer is A, series. We need to know that in a parallel type circuit, voltage is the same across all components. Here we see an example of a parallel circuit. You should be able to see that each resistor is connected to 12 volts. Our question might be, in which type of circuit is voltage the same across all components? A, series, B, parallel, C, resonant, or D, branch? Of course, the answer is B, parallel. This is the end of Lesson 5, Part 4. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe it if you did. Until next time, my friends, never stop learning.